This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company located in Perrysburg, Ohio. They are a world class hand roasted micro batch coffee, which means that it is freshly roasted after you order. They are fair trade certified USD organic and integrity is their core value. Coffee come in K-Cup, gift cards available, and free shipping over $50. You can save even more with a subscription service. So check out that that and much, much more over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. Kabuto, what the hell, man? I'm really glad that the gifts don't show up in the in the live chat window on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, it would be more chaotic if they did, which like, what, what are we, if we're not just chaotic at this point? Yeah. So we're talking some basketball here, Jared, and we're doing this a day earlier because yeah. you know, real life work happens. Uh, <laughs> so let's, let's not waste any more time, Jared. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'll let you know. Uh, Kabuto, you forgot. I'm not I'm not a chaotic neutral. I'm a chaotic good. There is a difference. A very key difference. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing tonight, good sir? Not not doing too bad. Um, I basically I basically spent all day like either at the gym or in the yard doing yard work. So, uh, beer. Yes, beer. <laughs> I already have beer, so I'm not going to have a second beer for for our recording here. So I'm. Feeling good already, so let's... What about for the second recording? We're doing two recordings. You can I have a beer for the second recording? We'll see. We'll see how things go. Ask Sloopcast, will Kyle drink a second beer for the second recording? We'll see. Okay. All right, Jerry, let's jump into it. Um, we are doing this a day early, so we will and We're releasing this a day early, too. Kyle, this is a very rare Sunday Sloopcast. It we're is, dropping this yeah. one on a Sunday. Kyle's got travel stuff, because... I. I don't know if you guys know this, but podcasting doesn't pay the bills. So <laughs> Kyle's <laughs> real life job uh, has him traveling. So uh, we are recording this on a Saturday. We'll be releasing this episode on a Sunday, which is abnormal for us. But real life be real life sometimes. Yep. So we will not be covering the Ohio State Michigan game here, but we will cover the other two games, and we will we will start with um, we'll start the on the down the uh, the low part of the episode here and that is Ohio State's loss to Nebraska 78 to 70. Definitely not the showing that we wanted from Ohio State here as this should have been a should have been a relatively um I should say relatively easy game. Uh Nebraska did come off of an amazing uh, performance against Michigan State before that Ohio State before playing Ohio State. And yeah, Ohio State just looked tired they looked exhausted they just looked beat on on last week's slew poops i said that you know i was giving them a pass they lost the game they should have won but i was gonna give them a pass because they were tired because it was the third game and da, 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 da. like i i gave them tired legs i gave them all of that but uh, nebraska nah and like you know what? Zed Key wasn't playing. Kyle Young wasn't playing. That's that's tough. That's very tough. But Nebraska, like, no, not. I feel like it was almost anyone else in the conference. I would give them those excuses. Yeah, no, absolutely. Defensively, like, I think 70 points should have been enough to beat Ohio or beat Nebraska here. But their defense just abysmal just completely abysmal in this game here and get hats off to nebraska they 
made the shots. They shot about 40% from the three-point line, 49% overall, and I'll take 38% overall from the from the field there. They just whether it's just being tired or just not motivated, whatever the excuse is there, Ohio State's defense. Barnes getting 22 minutes. Barnes getting 22 minutes. Uh, it's just, there really isn't a good excuse why Ohio State lost this game. Defense just was abysmal. Too many easy alley um, alleyways to get into the, um, to the hoop from Nebraska. Too many open shots, not, not, not enough contested um, shots. It's just the defense is just needs to improve here, or else it's going to be a short, short uh, postseason. Well, and you know they lose Kyle Young. He only gets eight minutes in this game. Uh, they, you know, Zed Key was out from the beginning, and that just killed him in the paint. Um, you know, they Joey Brunk got four minutes in this game, which. Given what we now know after the Michigan State game, which we'll talk about in a moment, why was Joey Brunk only given four minutes? He's the only true center on the team. And, like, it is, you know, hey, why, you know, we've sort of like, oh man, I wish, you know, we've been just sort of thinking like Brunk is, maybe he just didn't cut it. Maybe he's just not this. Maybe he's not that. You know, if, if, if they aren't giving him minutes, there's probably a reason why they aren't giving him minutes. Then, like, we saw the Michigan State game. So, like, one, I'm happy that, that Brunk made a huge impact in that game. And, and that that's fantastic. And hopefully that's a thing we can, we can look forward to in the future. But on the other hand, with no Zed Key and with basically no Kyle Young, why was Brunk not playing in this game? I don't know. That's that's a good question here. And as you <clears throat> as you said, Jared here, Arns had twenty two minutes here. Uh, man, I gotta zoom in here because I can't read. Uh, Soto's have played actually quite a bit here, and I thought overall he he did well. But the defensive side, just like with everybody else, uh, just. Not good. Not good enough to to win this game here. Um, yeah, there's. I don't know. I, I feel like with these losses, I feel like I'm I'm just repeating myself with a lot of the things here. But one of the one of the things we talked about, Jared, about why Ohio State loses the game is is letting up these darn offensive rebounds. Well, they didn't really let up that many against Nebraska. They only let up four offensive rebounds, and Ohio State ended up getting 14 in this right. game. But it's just, it's just, Nebraska had too many easy shots, too many layups that just weren't contested, and that, that cost Ohio State the game. Yeah, it's, 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 it's inexcusable. I don't know what else to say about this game. It's, they have plenty of excuses you could pull from. Plenty of excuses. Uh, the, the incredible number of games that they've had to play in the past, the missing of your two, you know, biggest in when you want to say biggest, I mean size of your regular contributors, and then like there's there's tons of excuses to pull from here, but it's Nebraska. <laughs> it's it's like losing to Illinois in football. You don't do it. It's not a thing you do. It's, I it's it's Nebraska. I, what, what am I supposed to say other than it's Nebraska? This is a conference filled, top to bottom, with really great basketball teams. And when I say bottom, I mean almost bottom because I'm not including Nebraska. Yeah, I don't. It's know, Nebraska. I don't know what, what, <laughs> yeah, I don't know much more about to say, but uh, yeah, I would. I wish. We got to see, especially, especially after seeing what what he did, as you said, Jared, uh, what he did in the Michigan State. I'd like to see what more minutes of Brunk would have done in the Nebraska game, but it is what it is. Yeah, I would have loved to have taken about half of Arn's minutes and given them to Brunk. Uh, yep. All right. 
All right, we're going to do an early ad break here, and we'll go ahead and get into the Michigan State game, Jared. So go ahead and tell us a few of the co great coffees that Iron Bean Coffee Company has over at their website, over at ironbeancoffee.com. Now, Kyle, I know you said the coffee, right? Mm -hmm. And I get it. I get it. Like, it's a coffee company. Let's talk about some coffee. But, Kyle, I have some exciting news for you. Do you? I do. Have you ever thought to yourself, Jared, I don't really like coffee. I'm not going to buy from mm -hmm. Iron Bean Coffee. Well, I have good news for you. There's chocolate now. There's the Crazy Monkey, which is a banana, vanilla, wafer, white chocolate bark. Y'all you, you know what a chocolate bark is, right? I don't got to explain that. It's a chocolate bark. It's got vanilla wafer. It's made of white chocolate. It's got flavors of banana in there. Uh, yeah, I know you'd never say that, Nomad. You're a, I think you're the nerdiest coffee person we have in the Discord server, and that's including me. Um, now, <laughs> Austin's like, I don't like coffee, but I like Iron Bean. Oh, thank you, Austin. Uh, uh, I'm sure everyone over there enjoys that. Uh, then there's the other... They have a second chocolate option. This one's a... Um, uh, this is a... This is a... I don't know if it's dark chocolate or milk chocolate. It looks really dark in the picture, but it doesn't say dark chocolate in the... In, well, let me, let me actually... Read, I'll tell you what. I want to click on it and read the damn description. How about that? Um, peanut butter pretzel bark. I'm in. I, it's, it's peanut butter and it's pretzel and chocolate. I'm in. I, I, I don't need to know anything else, personally. Um, made with cast iron Honduran. Uh, this bark is wicked good. Um, it's got sea salt. It's got pretzel. It's got peanut butter. What, I, what, what, what else do I got to say to you? Um, it is milk chocolate. There, I found it. I found that it's milk chocolate, everybody. So it is milk chocolate. Now. Jared, I don't really, uh, I still don't know if I, I, I'm not doing sugar right now. Um, uh, I just, the chocolate's too rich for me. I, I don't, I'm just not doing sweets right now. Well, I got good news for you. They also have soap. They're selling soap now. You're out of excuses. Go buy some shit from Iron Bean Coffee. Uh. There's the Mocha Coca uh, Iron Bean co or Iron Bean Coffee Soap Bar. They're called Iron Bars, you guys. They're Iron Bars, um, but they're but they're made of soap. Just just so we're clear. Um, this bar is calm, caring, never gets angry. Uh, let's see. I, I don't want to. I don't want to do full description on all of these. We got to get going. But uh, the next one is the Heavy Cream, and the third. That's right. There are three bars of soap. Um, there is the cinnamon AF soap bar. So you have a, you have a mocha choca, a cinnamon AF, and a heavy cream. Those are your three soap options. Add those onto the chocolate options. And by the way, if you keep an eye on the website, they, they also sell mugs. You're out of excuses. You have to like one of these things. Go buy something from ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, second game. Yeah, sorry, second Gangland game says... Jared, Ohio I'm sorry, State. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Kyle. Gangland says, you get thirsty, hungry, and dirty. We all we all do all three of those things. That That is a thing that brings all of us humans together. That, that's, I'm sorry, that's it. Please continue. All right, second game is Ohio State and Michigan State, where Ohio State had an 80-69 to 69 victory. And man, they were they were just lights out on fire in this game here. They eighty points against Sparty and a down year for Sparty, but still a, a good Sparty team. Shot shot almost fifty five percent from the field, forty five percent from the three point line. Jared, and yeah, it's in in the man of the match here that everybody was talking about is Joey Brunk. Joey, Joey Brunk. And yeah. he ended up playing 32 minutes in this game. Yeah. I feel like that's that's not as much as he played all season. <laughs> and he played, played that played that one game. 
and had a season high 18 points when he was averaging under two points a game here. I think he had 30 something, 31, 32 points all season. So, way, yeah, yeah he, Joey, he, B, Joey B 2.0. Yeah, yeah so was, where, where the hell was. was this all year? And, and I say that not necessarily towards Brunk. Cause like he had some minutes early in the season and it didn't necessarily look great, but he's like, he was getting, he's getting together with a, with a new, uh, he says prepping for a test to get into law school. That that's fine. Like I don't let's, let's be honest. Basketball is not football. It's not like there's some huge playbook to It's not like there's a new game plan every week. Like it's, I mean, I get that there's a new game, but it's, 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 it's not football. Let's be honest. It does not require that much. So, yeah, okay, I get it. He's trying to get into law school. But no, you can still... Listen, if Craig Krenzel can be a microbiology major while playing football, I understand law school is a lot, gangland. I'm not saying it isn't. Yeah, and end up winning a national title. <laughs> Just saying... It's basketball. It's not the same thing as as quarterbacking a football team. Um, yeah. I'm not making fun of Buckeye Esquires. I'm making fun of the the intellectual side of basketball, if anything. <laughs> yeah, there, there were part, going back to the game here. There are definitely parts in this game here where Ohio State had a good lead. They started on off just amazing. I'm going to pull up. 17-0? They went up on a 13 0 start. 13-0. Yep, a 13 17 was a lot. nothing start here. And there were parts there were parts in this game where Ohio State got up pretty big. There was they were up by 15 in the second half, and then Michigan State started coming back, and Ohio State finished pulled away, and then and then Michigan State got back in. Like it was like a it was like a nine point game. No, it was like a six point game with under two minutes left. And we're like, oh no, here comes Sparty. They're going to make a run to, to make it make it interesting and to possibly win the game. And hey, Ohio State just was able to just make some make some key shots in that last two minutes here. Yeah, and you know, as as Kyle pointed out, Brunk gets thirty two minutes here, um, and it's nice because, like, again, this is a tired team with tired legs. Um, so to to put in Joey Brunk, who is fresh, and it, and like it showed too, because he's like most energetic dude on the court at times, which is saying something for a center, yeah. as big as he is. So, Kyle, I think the the question we have to be asking ourselves is: this a flash in the pan performance? Was this like a good matchup for him? Michigan State, like Ohio State, has struggled against big guys this year. Is this a like a a swan song, a swung song. I can't talk. Uh, for for Joey Bronk, is this a flash in the pan that was just boom one time thing? The defense wasn't ready for it. The defense was what un, was not matched up well. Or has Ohio State found a, a big guy underneath? Because like I've said it before, like Zed Key has not been performing well the past few games. So, like, is it a possibility? Could we possibly see, you know, even if Zed Key is healthy and comes back, that we see more Joey Brunk minutes? And, like, even if it's not starting, or maybe it is starting, but even if it's not starting, you know, that's, you know, he's maybe the first person in when Zed Key comes out now. Maybe. Yeah, uh, Nomad says Zed I, Key I, has looked exhausted. I I don't disagree with that. I really again they've had to play a lot of games in a short amount of time. They had to make up for some, um, and he's had to go as, as Austin points out, and he's had to go up against some really big guys in this Big Ten stretch. Maybe maybe Zed Key's tired. Maybe like injuries a blessing in disguise, especially if Joey Brunk's gonna play well. So maybe, you know, he takes a little bit of time, 
gets his ankle in order, just rest, just rest a bit, and yep. maybe it's a good thing in the long run. Now, losing to Michigan State, or excuse me, losing to Nebraska, such a dagger as far as trying to get get into that fourth spot, right? Yeah. It, it, you can also is. just play both, Austin asks. I mean, well, okay, especially when Liddell's on the bench. Like, that's that's the key there, right? Because I think you also don't want to be taking too many minutes away from from Kyle Young either. He's been playing really well as of late. Um, yeah. So, like, how many forwards, how many big guys do you want on the court? Um, if any... <laughs> No, I'm not going to say it. I've been I've been too mean to him lately. Um, but like, how many big guys do you want on the court? Yeah, it, already struggling with spacing. Exactly, gangland. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you have Joey Brunk and Zed Key and Liddell and Kyle Young all playing like forward slash center, it does start to get a little bit crowded. I, yeah. EJ plays small forward. Kyle is power forward. Yeah, and then, I mean, I get what you're. I, I get where you're. And and Brunk is a as a center. A bit, yeah, and like you still have Kyle Young who can come in at power forward. Um, yeah. So, I get so it. So now, Ohio State looking at the standings right now, Jared. Ohio State, oh, man, it's they they can't control their own destiny at this point. They they well they have to win against Michigan here, and they need Iowa to lose to Illinois to get that fourth spot. So they get the double buy here. So that loss to ne- that loss to Nebraska is it really cost them to get that extra day of rest that they that they desperately need here. So, I mean, yeah, Sunday Sunday's going to be really, really important here on how Ohio, Ohio State will do in the um, Big Ten tournament here. Because it looks like Wisconsin pretty much secured the first spot. Illinois and Purdue are, depending on, they're going to get two and three there. And then it looks like it's Iowa and Ohio State for that fourth and fifth spot. Yeah, and... You know, I feel good that Ohio State's going to beat Michigan. Um, mm-hmm. It's not a foregone conclusion. It shouldn't be easy, especially with a with a loss to Nebraska, like in the very you, recent you, you past. Never, you never you never know with it being a rivalry game. I mean, look at what's happening as we're recording here. Duke is a much better team than North Carolina, and and with all the emotions going around with Coach K and his final home game here. North Carolina is up by 11 points with 10 minutes left. Rivalry, yeah. you, you can never, you never disregard rivalries. Close enough, gang lion. <laughs> <laughs> Close uh, enough. Nomad says they get three days rest, which is helpful. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I feel like it's probably been the longest but, stretch of rest they've that, had recently. But um, that extra day of rest, that double buy though, you, you, you take any rest that you can get. Oh, no, no, I think Nomad means, like... Oh, yes, against... Thursday yeah. into Friday, Saturday, then Sunday. Yes. That's what he means. Yes. He means between Michigan State you. and Michigan. Yeah. I so, yep. I feel like that's the longest stretch of rest they've had uh, recently, even if that's not true. Mm-hmm. It certainly feels like it. Um, again, I feel like they should beat Michigan. Yes. But they should have beat Nebraska, and they should have beat Minnesota, so... This, and, this Ohio and, State team feels like they are capable of both beating and being beaten by literally any team in the country. Yeah. So Ohio State plays Michigan 1230 on Fox. Uh, is that Gus Johnson? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. And, then, and then Illinois and Iowa play. It is on seven, Fox. I So I would yeah. assume so. And then uh, Illinois and Iowa is at 730. So Ohio State won't know if they get that double buy or not until until 9 30 10 o'clock on sunday and then oh from boy. and then from there we'll 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 see how things 
we'll see how things play out. So we'll we'll talk about. I guess we'll kind of have a. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll preview. talk to Jared about it. Maybe we'll have like a a, a Big Ten um, tournament preview, maybe. On, well, well, we'll uh, when are we recording next? Is it Tuesday or Wednesday? Uh, that's a good question. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what see when my work schedule. See how it see how it goes out. Yeah, we'd like maybe we'll get a maybe since we're recording, you know, or since we're releasing a Sunday Monday this week. Uh, we'll see if we can get a we'll see if we can get a midweek episode in there somewhere. Yes. Yep. We'll try. We'll try our best here. So. Um, anything else, Jared, about these these two games here? Um, any anything that you're wanting to see moving forward from? Um, I'm just fascinated to see what's the story with Joey Brunk. Yes, I, th- is, I think, this, I think is, that's a big thing. Is this a big? Is this a flash in the pan? Once in a tenure, I almost said lifetime. Once in a tenure thing for Joey Brunk at Ohio State. Um, or is this like? Is, does Ohio State have a center now? Well, I guess we'll. I guess we'll find out. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, look at that. <laughs> Gangland I mean, says, game "I game think game, he like, might get his shit rocked by Dickinson tomorrow." I mean, I mean, game I. Game, I well, we I, we don't know at this time what the status is for Kyle Young or Zed Key as we record this. Um, so, I don't know. I don't even know if we'll get to see that. Um, <laughs> Yes, and as Busca, Buckeye Esquire said, phrasing. But look, look, look at this game, though. I, this is the type of game that you want to see with Ohio State. Like, Liddell, 19 points. Brunk, 18 points, surprise. And then uh, Branham, 22 points. Wheeling, 16 points. It was the, the ball was moved around a lot, and it wasn't just Liddell show or Liddell and Branham. You got more, you got more players involved in this game, so we'll, we'll see how it... See if it continues um, in the upcoming games. For sure. Um, and it's, you know, uh, Gingling says, even if they are available, how do you sit him to start? Because he's not been the starter all year. Like, it's it's easy to, I feel like you're maybe suffering from a tad bit of recency bias. Like, I know he's coming off of a great game, but that's literally been the only great game all year. Now, do I want, do I hope that it's going to be a, a thing moving forward this season? I sure as hell do. I sure as hell do. But uh, has Key been able to make those shots to help the offensive flow? No. Yes, he has. Not recently. He's been struggling absolutely. As of recent, he has been struggling. Zed Key is very cap- is a very capable scorer. We have not seen it recently. He's not had a good he's not had a good March. He's not had a good like li- li- uh, later half of February. I grant you that. Again, maybe some rest will be huge for him. Yeah, Buckeye Square says last year is maybe even a little bit better for him. Uh, strictly as a scorer, yeah, I think so. Um, I think Zed Key has struggled a bit again, especially in the recent games and. Like I said, maybe the ankle injury, blessing in disguise, maybe he gets some rest, maybe he can get re-motivated to get back on the court. You know, we might see old Zed Key back. Um, just, you know, try trying not to be trying not to be a prisoner of the moment and just assume that the last thing we saw is going to be reflective of what we can hope to see in the future. Uh, that That's it. It's it feels really important because it was the last thing we saw, but it's literally a complete outlier from everything else we have seen from Joey Brunk this year. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm not taking a hard stance one way or the other. I'm not saying, well, that was a flash in the pan and that was, it's an outlier and it, it's, it's, it was a matchup issue and blah, 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 blah. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a naysayer on this. I'm just saying, I don't know. That's it. I'm just saying I don't know. Yep. All right. All right, Jared. I think I think that's it uh, for today's episode. Anything else before we before we call it an episode? No, I think we can call this one an episode. 
Um, want to encourage everyone to come join our Discord server. Uh, if you don't know, Discord server is kind of like a like if you use Slack or or Teams at work, it's it's kind of like that, except uh, it's not work. <laughs> It's it's more like hanging out with your friends after work than it is than it is work. Uh, it's a very unprofessional slack. Yes. <laughs> Austin says it's kind of like work. Oh, good lord, no! I hope not. Nothing like my work, anyway. <laughs> I don't know what you guys do over there at Jimmy's Chicken Shack, but uh, that 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 is that is not how my that is not how my group chat at work works. Um, now fun, we have, a, I announced the fun event in the discord server, uh, in our, in our, uh, Patreon only podcast. Um, I am, al- I'm allowing our discord server to choose my next tattoo. So if you want to, if you want an opportunity, if you want to not, we're doing a tournament now it's not a it's not a sixty four person tournament. It's it's a, it's only it's we, we we fast forward to the elite eight. We fast forward to the elite eight. So we're doing a tournament, an, a March Madness style tournament, uh, to allow you guys to pick my next tattoo. So if you've ever thought to yourself, "Gee, I really like Jared," but um, I want to permanently leave a mark on his body. And I don't know if that's a fetish thing for you or if it's a violence thing for you or maybe you just need like to feel power. Maybe you maybe mm-hmm. you feel the need to have power over me. I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, it's up to you. But uh you do have to join the Discord server and 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 make a make a decision that will be permanent for me. That's the thing that that I it's Kyle I still haven't decided if this is this if this is clever or stupid. Yeah. What, is this stupid what I'm doing? The allowing the Discord server to choose my next tattoo? Is this stupid? Maybe. Maybe. Am I dumb? We'll find out. We'll find we'll, out. We'll, we'll find out. Okay. Well, the chat is saying yes. Um, but you guys are the ones choosing it. Like, don't don't you say that? You're the ones choosing it. Actually, the fact that you're the ones choosing it actually kind of proves your point. <laughs> Allowing these jackals down here in the live chat to choose my next tattoo. What the fuck am I thinking? Well, no, that one's that one's not that that one uh that one's in the NIT. That one's in the NIT gangland. It did not make the cut. Yes, you really get a choice. Now, did I limit your options? Sure. Because I didn't want a, a Mario Goatsy on my stomach. I'm not... Listen, I'm crazy not stupid, okay? I'm crazy not stupid. I gave you eight items to choose from, alright? Yeah. But Buckeye asked why it's not only the safer option, it was the only option. <laughs> All right, Kyle, that's it. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, two things here. Uh, speaking of basketball, since we are, this is a Sweep Hoops episode here, uh, Ryan, Ryan Penn, who's the essentially the offensive coordinator for the, uh, for the basketball team, is moving on. He's moving on to be the head coach over at Illinois State. Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's another... That's another uh, Assistant coach that Holtman's going to have to to fill in for next season, and the second thing I have here is the Columbus Crew had a three three tie over San Jose Quakers, which yeah. they were up like three one up yeah. a man with in the going into the eighty fifth minute, and San Jose got two goals before the end of regulation. Yeah, injury time was huge on that one. Yeah. Uh, so. Nomad, or, yeah, Nomad says, I still don't believe you'll do it. I'm, I'm 100% doing it. Like, 
I am 100% doing it. Like, ha- have no fear. I'm 100% doing this. Uh, all right, Jared. That's, that's all Gangland I says, I actually participated in a Patreon tattoo bracket where people submitted images. Only way in hell I'm doing that is if you have to pay a, a, a hefty sum to submit an image. And I get to choose to hide it somewhere on my body where no one ends up seeing it. Like, <laughs> oh God, that encouraged him. That encouraged him. It was a 10K sub event. I'd do it for 10K just to submit a possibility. I do it for 10K, and I don't. I can't get that. Wait a minute. They were. Oh, it was 10K sub event. 10K subs on Patreon, but five dollars to submit an idea. No, it would have to be a lot more than that. A lot more than that. It would have to be a lot more than that. All right, Jared, um, go, go ahead and hit us. We're, up we're ending the episode before this turns before this turns into our Patreon episode. Let's end this. So, uh, Kyle, tonight's ending music will be "Saving Escape," which is a band I tried to play last time before I was rudely interrupted by our live chat. But they're a Cincinnati band. They're incredibly talented. I love the lead singer's voice. Um, Austin, you do have good taste. I'll have to say that. I don't know if I actually got back to you on that, uh, but I really like that band that that you had me play uh, last week. So uh, with that, (laughs) obviously, you're such a dick, Austin. (laughs) So with that, uh, yeah, Saving Escape, Saving Escape, Cincinnati band, uh, great, talented, uh, lots and lots and lots of talent. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Saving Escape.